Will O.J. Howard sign with the Bengals? Plus, Cincinnati adds not one, not two, but three players on waivers. I react to those and more right here on Cincinnati Bengals Talk. Hi again, everyone, and welcome in to CBT Cincinnati Bengals Talk. I'm James Erpine here at Paycor Stadium where... Yeah, I'm seeing some pay course signage. It's starting to look a little different around here, and it's going to look a little different on the Bengals roster as Cincinnati adding three guys, awarded three guys, on waivers. Max Sharping, a guard, and we'll break down each one. Devin Asiasi, a tight end, and defensive tackle, Jay Tufele. And look, all three guys were – mid-round draft picks either day two draft picks or early day three picks over the past couple of years and first things first my instant reaction is well that's great because that means this regime this obviously front office but this coaching staff they all evaluated these guys so they can go back to their notes and say all right well in 2019 how did we view max sharping and, and that was kind of an odd year because that was Zach's first year and all of that. But still, they can do that. Same thing goes um, for the past couple of years, whether it was Asiasi in 2020 or uh, uh, Tufele in 2021. I'm going to get that right. Tufele. I'm pretty sure I'm going to get it. Uh, anyways, Jay Tufele. By the way, Zach Taylor just called him Jay. So I'm not the only one that's trying to knock down uh, these new names. There's going to be some corresponding roster moves to these. Andrew Miller and I, we're going to do a live stream tonight. Wednesday night, 6.30. We'll discuss that. We'll discuss the practice squad. There'll be time for that. We're going to call it, you know, a bourbon with Cincinnati Bengals talk. We'll throw back a couple bourbons, and we'll chat with you live at 6.30 Eastern time right here on Cincinnati Bengals talk. But let's dive into these moves a little bit. First of which, Max Sharping. I love the addition of Max Sharping. You're talking about a guy, I think he just turned 26. He's got 33 starts under his belt. And by the way, I am going to get to O.J. Howard, too. One second. Um, 33 starts under his belt. Can play both guard spots. Has a little tackle flex. But to me, he gives you a proven option at tackle. A, a veteran yet in his prime option, or, or at guard rather, at guard behind someone in Cordell Volson, who Zach Taylor named starter at left guard today. We knew it was going to happen. We've been talking about it on the channel for a couple of weeks now. It was confirmed today by the coaching staff. But what does that mean? That means that you want to have someone proven in there. Did anything Jackson Carmen do in the preseason make you feel good? Well, at least with Max Sharping, he's a guy who can pass block at a high level based on some metrics I saw. Doesn't have the best PFF numbers last year, but to me, someone the Bengals can work with and, and get serviceable, adequate guard play out of, which is what you want. Devin Asiasi, known primarily as a blocking tight end, Zach Taylor, uh, did praise his route running a little bit in his news conference, which we did put right here on CBT. But to me, this is, is very much a, all right, now they have someone else where if Drew Sample isn't ready or if you need to go heavy, if you need someone to, to be this primary blocker at tight end, it gives you some Hayden Hurst insurance. And we'll talk more on the tight ends in just a second, including the latest with Drew Sample. And, and then you get the Jay Tufele and – I like this because they only had four defensive tackles, and they were going to have to do something there because you have Josh Chupo, you have DJ Reader, you have BJ Hill, and, and it's like, all right, well, what are you going to do? Well, you draft Zach Carter in the third round, you still need a guy. And so Tufele is a guy that they obviously evaluated. He was a fourth-rounder last year, picked by the Jaguars, released by the Jaguars. You might be like, oh, well, the Jags released him. New regime, new front office. Obviously, we know that Urban Meyer fiasco last year. Who the hell knows if this kid can play? But bring him in. You like them pre-draft. Why not bring him in take a closer look? So I like all three additions. I, I think they all make some sense. Now, does Asi Asi and the claim of him, does that impact O.J. Howard? It sounds like, uh, according to Ian Rappaport, that O.J. Howard's still in play, that it sounds like they're still going to try to get something done with him. Doesn't expect it to happen today. This could certainly happen on Thursday. So we'll, we'll keep you covered here when it comes to O.J. Howard. I did a video on him this morning when Rappaport reporting that it was imminent, that a signing was likely to happen. 
But that was before Devin Asiasi got claimed. So now I think the Bengals got to do some some roster management here. And that's the part of it. The Bengals didn't know if they were going to get Asiasi. And I, I, I'm not sure they thought they were going to get any of these guys. And they get three, despite being 31st on the waiver priority. And they were able to keep a lot of, and we'll reflect on all this tonight at 630, all of their main guys, uh, uh, practice squad guys that they were hoping to keep outside of Kendrick Pryor. He was claimed last second. He was here in the building. In fact, he opened, Kendrick Pryor was on the phone, I believe it was with his agent, opens the door to the locker room as I'm going in uh, from the news conference room, and he's on the phone. The Jaguars had just claimed him. So congratulations to Kendrick Pryor. I thought he would squeak by, and he almost did. Jaguars claimed him, and so now he's Jacksonville bound. Good for him. Played well. Kwame Lasseter did make it to the practice squad. But that's how wild these type of days are these cut down days and then the waiver days and then what could happen next and so I think the Bengals they're just gonna have to do some roster management part of the reason why OJ Howard might not be signed until Thursday is because of that you have to figure out where you're gonna put certain guys which guys are gonna go on injured reserve which guys are gonna come back and so there's a, a lot of juggling that has to happen this time of year but overall I think the Bengals roster is better right now than it was in the past there will be some cuts coming down maybe by the time you see this video or around that time uh, at four o'clock i'll keep you up to date at allbengals.com uh, there's definitely going to be some roster moves and some roster juggling so practice squad will get announced all of those things i'll post it all at allbengals.com and then i'm going to have you covered here on cincinnati bengals talk at 6 30. look joe is doing his Bengals on the Brain show. Elise is doing the OT with Elise. Jesse, guess what? It's time for Andrew and I. Yeah, Fox is going to be there, Andrew and I, to do a live show as well. Well, We'll do it tonight. We'll call it what? Bourbon with CBT. You could do Bengals bourbon and all that. We're not doing CBT, you know, Cincinnati bourbon talk tonight, 630 Eastern time. So overall, I think the Bengals have gotten better. We'll elaborate more on that tonight at uh, 630. And by the way, I got to give a shout out. To, to my man Doug and, and Doug Burns and the Rivertown Inquiry team. If you haven't gotten to Rivertown Inquiry yet, you need to. I stopped in there today. I like to stop in every so often in person. If you're not in Cincinnati, go to rivertowninquiry.com. But they're located in Oakley and uh, on Madison Road right there. Man, great shop, great gear, high quality stuff. And we may have some CBT gear in the works, maybe a little polo action for our staff. So Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you ring the bell, and we'll see you tonight at 630. For Andrew Fox Miller, I'm James Erpine signing off for now right here on Cincinnati Bengals Talk.